This is pre-calculus section 2.4 on complex numbers. And to begin with, let's look at imaginary numbers. The number i is defined as being the square root of negative 1. There is no real number that works for that, so we created this imaginary number i to satisfy that. And then if you squared both sides of this equation, you'd get that i squared is equal to negative 1, which is very useful for us. For instance, if we want to take the square root of negative 16, what two numbers multiply to negative 16? Well, positive times a positive is a positive, and negative times a negative is a positive. There's nothing that works. However, if we break this down as negative 1 and 16, now I know that the square root of negative 1 is i, the square root of 16 is 4, 4i four is the square root of negative 16. And when it comes to complex numbers, every number that we work with is complex. Complex numbers include a real part and an imaginary part. For instance, this number could be called 0 plus 4i, but since there is no real, we don't have to write it. Even simple numbers like 25 could be called 25 plus 0i. We look at it as a complex number, but 0i is irrelevant. We don't want to write it because it just makes it look more complicated. So this definition helps us to solve various problems. Example, x squared minus 36 equals 0. So to solve this one, I can factor it as x minus 6 plus 6 equals 0 then x equals positive 6 and negative 6. Great. Or I could add 36 to both sides, take the square root of both sides, and x equals positive or negative 6. Both are good and acceptable ways to solve that equation, which takes us down to this one. First of all, there's no way to factor 25, x squared plus 25. I can't do x plus 5, x minus 5. That wouldn't work. If I subtract 25 from both sides, I get this. And now using the imaginary number i, I would say x is plus or minus the square root of negative 25. The square root of the negative gives us i in the answer. The square root of 25 is 5. So we have plus or minus 5i for our solution to that equation, which is good. It's x to the second power. I'm expecting two solutions. Here they are, positive 5i and negative 5i. And as we start getting these solutions, we need to know how to write them out into factored form as well as to multiply them out. So first example, if we multiply this out, x squared plus 3xi, and the order of those um, letters could, could switch, multiply those, that's negative 3xi, and multiply the last ones, that's minus 9i squared. These inside terms are complete opposites. So we're getting x squared, and then minus 9 times i squared, Remember, i squared is negative 1, so negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9, and that is the expanded out form from the factored form. Let's try another one that has a little bit more to it. Notice that inside the parentheses, what we're subtracting are 2 plus 4i and 2 minus 4i. These are complex conjugates of each other. They're exactly the same, with the only exception being the plus and minus signs being different. So if we Distribute the negative sign to the first one and distribute the negative sign to the second one. We have these trinomials that we have to multiply. So I'm just going to start multiplying things. X times X, X times negative 2, and X times 4i. Now I'll distribute the negative 2 to everything. So negative 2X, positive 4, and negative 8i. Lastly, distribute the negative 4i to everything. That's negative 4xi plus 8i, and then multiply those, we get negative 16i squared. Multiply a trinomial times a trinomial, we have nine terms here. Good news is negative 4xi, positive 4xi cancel each other out. 8i, negative 8i cancel each other out. We have x squared. There's a negative 2x, there's a negative 2x, so minus 4x. And then as far as the numbers go, we have 4. Negative 16i squared would be negative 16 times negative 1, making this a positive 16. And if we combine those together, we get plus 20. So multiplying those, we get this product. And where this really comes into play in our chapter 2 is we're trying to solve these polynomial equations is to solve something like this. Now, we, we're going to have a lot of strategies to solve these as far as using the calculator, using synthetic division. Um, factoring is going to be one of the first things we want to look at. And as I look at this, at the beginning, I notice there's four terms. So I'm going to try grouping. The GCF for the first two is x squared. The GCF for the last two is 4. 
And since these are exactly the same, that means it is possible and I'm doing it correctly. So to bring it down to the next step, part of the factored form is 3x minus 5. The other one is the GCFs of x squared and plus 4. So as far as answers go, I could set this equal to 0. Add 5 to both sides and divide by 3. X equals 5 third. Great, there's one answer. But since it was X cubed, I'm expecting three answers. So if we set X squared plus 4 equal to 0, subtract 4 from both sides. So X equals plus or minus the square root of negative 4. And I've done a few of these now. I know if I'm taking the square root of a negative, I know there's going to be an I in the answer. The square root of 4 is 2 with the plus or minus. So these are our three answers. This can be 5 thirds, positive 2i, or negative 2i. So with this introduction of the imaginary number i, we can solve equations like this that wouldn't have three real answers, but a total of three complex answers.